Very fine, very fine. Thank you for joining us once again live here Saturday night, 6.30, Santa Cruz, coming to you. I'm Terry Lee Martin. This is Terry Lee Martin and the Not Too Early, Not Too Late show. Co-host on the show, Doug Semler. Thank you for Doug being here, Doug. So wonderful to have you here. <laughs> get ready. It's going to get the camera shots on Doug, too. Okay. And also, a band cruising is in the house. We have lots of green guests on the show today. I'll announce them here in a second right now. Let's talk about a few things out there in the world. In Kathmandu, a cave was discovered to contain 12th century murals of Buddha. A local sheep herder was the person to discover the cave. When asked what it was that brought him to the cave, the sheep herder replied, well, well why else does a uh, sheep herder go into a cave with a sheep? Come on. <laughs> Can we have some drums, please? Some drums. I thought that was pretty obvious uh, coming. Uh, in related animal fun news, the Chinese are experimenting again. They are trying to get the pandas to mate. Can't seem to do it. The male panda doesn't seem interested. Maybe they should take that TV out of the room. You think so? <laughs> um, the uh, scientists are showing panda porn to the troubled couple. They are also being fed a, a special panda biscuit diet to help them stay fit, made of bamboo vitamins and fiber. I mean, shouldn't they throw a little Viagra in this thing? Uh, you know, I, I think if they're listening, try that. It would help. Uh, Queen Elizabeth in the news, she's paying a visit. And uh, her and the Vice President Cheney are visiting the oldest colonial town, Jamestown, Virginia. It's, I think, the 400th anniversary, maybe, is it? Well, anyways, uh, it's good. Uh, well, they're visiting the ruins and watching uh, theatrical plays and reenactment, and they saw some ancient artifacts. And after they left the museum, an alert sounded that some of the ancient artifacts were missing. Well, the curator for the museum said to watch out for the ancient objects. I think we found a, a couple of them. Do we have a, a camera on the picture here on the board? Can we get a close-up of, uh, I think we found some ancient artifacts. Maybe we can get a... A, a view right over yeah there we go there we go camera two any ancient artifacts on Matt's camera oh there we go <laughs> looking at the wrong monitor yes Queen Elizabeth and Cheney looking absolutely divine as they use <laughs> was like what the hell are we doing here uh, okay dog biting is now a felony have you heard about that recently passed legislation makes dog biting illegal when President Bush was asked about it he replied well you got to be some kind of idiot to bite dogs anyways don't you <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's, you do have to be some kind of an idiot. L.A. Mayor Antonio Villaregoso, Villaregoso, just back from a trade talk in South America, says he's sorry for the whole fiasco that's happened down there in the MacArthur Park area, and that kind of problem should never happen in L.A. Well, when asked by the reporters if he thinks the rift between the reporters and police could ever be repaired because they beat up some reporters, well, the mayor looked confused and said, what are you talking about? Someone just left a cake in the rain. There's no... He doesn't know. He had no idea. MacArthur Park. Yeah. <laughs> MacArthur Park. Yeah. I think that's it. Isn't that it? Yeah, okay. Guests on the show. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> Members of the UCSC campus green team are here. Tommaso Bogia, Lauren Mills, and Rachel Shiozaki making news. They're on our show tonight. Janet Rosenberg of Intero Real Estate with guests on our show to show us some greenhouse tips. And Susan Silton of the Broadway Playhouse will be joining us featuring a new play, and she's going to be talking about it here. The band Cruisin's on the show tonight. Thank you for joining us live here in Santa Cruz. Woo. All right. <laughs> okay, well, we, do you want us to sing a song or something? Because that wasn't my thing. It. Okay. One, two, three, and. What a bummer is a hummer. While watching gas prices go high. Driving in your high and smiling as you go past it on the guys. Stick a shot, talk that talk. Stick a shot, I got to walk that walk. Stick a shot, when you pay the price, you'll go. 
gonna get a stick of shot. cruising on our show today and thank you we're gonna get lots lots of more music from you and we'll hear more about you here in a little while but uh, thanks for being on our show and wonderful to have you here Doug Good to be here Feliz Cinco de Mayo Feliz Navidad I thought Cinco de Mayo Feliz Navidad. I thought Feliz I thought Cinco de Mayo was a, as a mayonnaise at first that was a long time ago but Cinco now I've, I've wisened up a little bit and I realize it's an incredibly beautiful uh, wonderful time for many people here especially in the West Coast uh, where we're at. So we have a Cinco de Mayo uh, kind of a thing uh, with the band. They got some cool music coming. And some Hawaiian shirts. And I didn't get out my sombreros. Oh, no. And I think I might do that for this show. We'll see. We'll see. How's it going with good, you? Good, good. And I, I wanted to mention, you know, uh, I happened to see that about the, the pandas. Oh, God. And, you know, I know they, <laughs> they tried the Viagra on a gorilla. <laughs> yes. And it got stuck in the gorilla's throat. And the gorilla had a stiff neck for... 36 hours. Oh my gosh. So maybe well, that's why they didn't try that with the pandas. Well, you know what? We have some footage we just received of some of that panda footage and maybe oh, uh, there we go. I don't know if they're implementing it properly, but I, I don't know. Do we have that, Ryan, uh, in, in there? And maybe not? No? Okay. Well, we're going to have some panda <laughs> footage here. Uh, oh, here they are right now. Together with some uh, soundtrack music. Uh, you know what? This isn't. Is this wrong? <laughs> it's wrong, but we're all right with it. <laughs> this is on the internet, so we have some rapping music that we don't hear in the studio, I guess. Um, it's a lot funnier if the music's on it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, well, and so Cinco de Mayo, the whole celebration's going on today. Oh, everywhere. The Kentucky Derby is also Kentucky, happening today. Kentucky, saw it's the queen raining. at the Derby. It's raining. The queen's there. The queen was there. And uh, she has some They had to have an extra seat for her hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and her, well, no, she's a, <laughs> she's a great lady. Cheney is another thing altogether, but uh, we won't talk about that. That's right. Uh, well, let's talk about this show. It's, uh, it's uh, going to be a, a fine show today. I, we have a few guests on the show that were all recently in the paper. And, uh, and it's going to be a pleasure to have them up here and talking some green Green. Things. And, uh, and I think, and what we're going to do here is, uh, is uh, talk about uh, getting them on the show. I want to introduce them. And you're going to stick around. Oh, but yeah. But unfortunately, we have to move you down. Oh. And then we'll move you back in later oh. on the show, Doug. Okay, yo, and then, yo. then, of course, you're in the house band that yeah, we have. Yeah, but that's not tonight. No, that's not tonight. No, but Greg to Henderson a... and the house band are usually here. And uh, it's a pleasure to have this, the crews in here tonight to bring in the festivities. Right now, let's bring in this uh, group of fine individuals. They're from the UCSC. They, are, uh, they have been active in the, uh, well, in, in not only in the local political 
seen landscape here, but uh, uh, but creating quite a change in other ways too. And uh, let's talk to them right now. Let's bring them out. We have uh, on the show right now, Tommaso Bogia. No, I'm sorry, Doug. We gotta we gotta move you down. Yeah, that's so not gonna is, work. This is, is gonna be okay. a little funky, but. I'm uh, going to take the up? back. Yeah, you're stepping up. All Thank right. you. Y'all move up here. Everybody please. moves up. And uh, I appreciate the the off the cuff feel the show represents yeah. sometimes. Tom Tommaso. How are you doing? Is that how we pronounce your name? Perfect. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Very nice. Now you were on the cover of a magazine. Was it? Uh, it was Good Times. Good yeah. Times and was, uh, the Green Team. Yeah, it was for a green issue of the Good Times and. Uh, they interviewed some of the people in Santa Cruz that are doing some stuff in the environment, and I was one of the people representing the campus work. Very nice. Going on. How was the mm -hmm. shoot? Did they call you into a big room, and then the others? We have a Janet Rosenberg, who was also in that shoot with you here today, and yeah, she'll be joining definitely. us. Actually, it was a pretty funny situation. Everybody's asking me, like, when did you go like on the countryside and stuff like that? We were actually in the parking lot uh, next to Trader Joe's uh, oh. in the big parking structure, and we were just around a car. No lights, no nothing, just a camera. Oh, okay. And it was pretty fun, yeah. Oh, very nice. Job. Well, there was a farm behind you, yeah. a farmhouse. Photoshop does amazing well, things. Oh, gosh dang, I was <laughs> looking for that <laughs> location. I went up to the, the College 8 and, and, and saw and met uh, uh, um, um, Lauren. Lauren. I'm sorry, i got to get your names <laughs> written down here because it's going <laughs> to get sure. me. Um, thank you for giving me the information. You guys were having a function up there for Earth Day. Yep. And uh, so I, I met you, uh, some of you up there. Can you tell us what it is that you have created in the campus and there's a tax increase in some ways too? Can you fill us in on yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. Last year I uh, was working with CalPERG, another nonprofit organization on, Cal on campus. Mm -hmm. We were trying to find ways to uh, pursue clean energy on our campus. And on-site renewables, so like solar panels, windmills, were way too expensive for anyone to, to appreciate. It would have taken way too much time. So I decided that as a first step, it would be very interesting to see if the students were willing to pay a little more money mm -hmm. to pay for renewable energy instead of for, for buying renewable energy from sure. the grid instead of buying the normal energy that PG&E sells us. Right. So we're, right now, we since the ballot measure passed, the students are paying three dollars um, and they're per quarter and they're purchasing clean energy. And that's wonderful. And mm -hmm. it puts you in a different bracket nationally, I hear. Yeah, uh, we became the first Division three school in the uh, amount of clean energy that we purchase and sixth in the nation. That is incredible. Yeah. Now, would you uh, introduce the, our fine guests here that are with Definitely. you in the Green Team? And what is the formal uh, name of the group that you are? We're the Green Campus Program. Green we Campus. actually work, now that we have, we're purchasing clean energy, uh, the three of us are working on implementing energy efficiency, so reducing the amount of energy that we use. Okay. And this is Rachel Shiozaki. She's working on housing. Hello. Hi. And Lauren Mills, she's working on di dining halls. Great. Hi. Great. And, and you're all working together? Are yeah. there others in the group? Uh, no, just the three of us. We're trying to hire new members right now to help us out. Okay, well here yep. will you go. Let's, <laughs> let's go. We have the information. And uh, Did you leave us information on how to contact you? with? Uh, yeah, we have children. some contact info over there, an okay. email address and a website. So, okay. so we'll be having that on so we'll, uh, we, we can hopefully get some people interested. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I'm a very big supporter of community involvement and grassroots mm -hmm. and things that are community oriented as opposed to conglomerate and corporate. And we, yeah. Obviously, you need to step in the direction of, uh, of, of what you're doing on Definitely. the campus, and congratulations for your efforts. Thank you. We, we had a, a possibility of a video, or actually a pinata at first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and what happened with that? We, Lauren might Lauren tell you more about that. Okay, us. so um, maybe you should look at these pictures real quick. Oh, well, so let's <laughs> do that. Can you hand them over, and then we I can, can get I can do a that. Um, so one of the activities that we do on campus is we trade out the students' old, inefficient, incandescent light bulbs, okay. and we get them the brand new, squiggly CFL light bulbs that you guys may have in your home right now. Okay. Those are some of them right there. And we wanted to do like a art project with the students, Camera I guess, two. where we had a light bulb smashing event to show okay. like, these are bad, we don't want these on the grid, no more. And uh, you know, there's safety issues with that at school, we don't want people to get hurt. So then I came there up with go. the idea to make a pinata that was shaped like a incandescent light bulb. Okay, here we go. Here's the pinata. There's a the pinata. 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 You can zoom in on it. It's pretty cool. It took about eight hours, so um, <laughs> right. that's eight, why that's I didn't make another one for the show. <laughs> it was quite an involved process. And there's like flour and mess everywhere. So. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. And then these are other pictures here. That's the student that broke the pinata. Um, we actually gave him a copy of An Inconvenient Truth okay. as a little gift. And oh. we did all this to just raise awareness about energy issues in the colleges 
and also to promote a big energy competition that we're having in the dorms. Okay. And Rachel can tell you about our energy competition okay, this year. Okay, hi Rachel. Hi, uh, it's an energy and water conservation competition okay. between three of the colleges, Crown, okay. Merrill, and Stevenson. Okay. And the idea is to increase awareness about issues regarding climate change and energy efficiency and conservation and sustainability on campus. Wow, that's great. So showing them ways that they can, um, they can work on this every day in their lives by changing their light bulbs, by using less energy and water. And yeah, by, like s by simple things. Simple uh, things. And, and actually, uh, this is wonderful that you're getting the, the word out in the news. And uh, Santa Cruz is a you know, very vibrant community for being aware of a lot of things that many other cities aren't. Yeah. And part of the difficulty is getting the message out and get it to spread. Mm -hmm. you know, like also, the there's a lot of people that say that, that the most important thing is like to be politically active, to vote, to elect the right people in, in our government so that they can take action and, and help us out. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately, in Santa Cruz, this is already taken care of. Uh, I remember I saw Mike Rockin on your show yes. saying that 70% of uh, people in Santa Cruz are registered to vote, mm -hmm. and of those, 90% uh, uh, go to vote, actually, or something like that. So a huge amount of, of people in Santa Cruz are already voting. What else can they do to solve environmental issues? Mm. They ha can do a lot of stuff in their homes, and it's not radical changes. It's changing a light bulb, turning off some lights, driving less, using bikes. We have an amazing public transportation system in Santa Cruz, yeah. a really bikeable city, and there's a lot that everyone can do. Well, that's great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's, uh, I, I, I like, you know, I don't know what happened to this, but I think in Tokyo, Japan, they have disposable bikes sitting out everywhere and you just get on one and go yeah and what uh, isn't that a great idea i mean just That's stuff amazing, like yeah. that would be well santa cruz had uh they, they had a bunch of bikes that somebody donated a few years ago oh they were all painted yellow oh and left right. all around town and they all ended up getting stolen mm. oh. never to be seen oh. again <laughs> <laughs> but we need to make more then in yeah. santa barbara they have a similar <laughs> system where uh Basically, it's, it's common practice to steal the bikes. So my brother, oh. for example, when he got to Santa Barbara, he bought a bike. Within the first week, it was stolen. So he didn't buy another one. He just steal from each other. So they just kind of, it's a constant. Well, there should be a bike. sticker. This, this, is, this is a steal <laughs> stealable <laughs> bike. Yeah, you know? Exactly. So <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes we need to feel we're doing something bad to really. Yeah. Um, well, we have on our, on our show, and I want to make a mention uh, real quick. Is there a, David God, are you in there? He's the director of the show. Is there a God mic for you? Yeah. Hello. Oh, okay. There he is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, David, uh, we have a video scheduled for after the band plays a song after this group, but I'd like to get that up there sooner. Do we have that uh, the motel video? Because this is our this is a greening thing that's happening in Santa Cruz right now. And if we can get that video to play. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 we're, we're looking through the pile of stuff. Yeah. Uh, it seems to be somewhere located next to the very bottom. Yeah, it, it, that's not labeled properly, I'm sure. But <coughs> anyways, if that's not possible, then uh, then we, we'll just have to wait to see this. But uh, we actually put some effort in. There's a motel that's coming up around Santa Cruz that is uh, striving to be green-oriented. Oh, here we go now. A closer look at yet another way the city business owners are cleaning up the downtown area. A disturbing trend is taking place, and it is called the Riff Raff Motel. It is fashioned after the Roach Motel idea where bugs check in, but they don't check out. But instead of attracting bugs, they're designed to attract, well, Riff Raff. With us in the studio today is one of the designers of the motel. We are here with Dr. Rudolf Rebelbuster, PhD. Thank you for being here, Doctor. It's a pleasure to be here. More audio. Now, tell us, how are you approached by the city? I prefer not to say. Now, I hear there are tools built into the motel to attract the riffraff. Can you tell us more about those? The whole riffraff motel experience is designed to, to lure and lull the person into an easy, pleasant passing. A passing? We prefer to say assimilate. Our, 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 our riffraff enter this motel and they're, they're brought into this beautiful state of bliss and then they're assimilated much in the way the mosquito zapper works by a powerful radiation beam. Comes down and pops them a good one and next thing you know the motel resets itself and it's open for business again. Wow, my God. So I hear this is green powered. How is this a green project? This is, this is very green technology. It's solar powered. And, and, and the person that gets assimilated, their matter stream gets added back to the space-time continuum 
and it helps fortify the whole environment. So it, how can it be a bad thing? Here we see the unsuspecting homeless walking down the street in a you state of change. stupor. And he looks down on the ground. He sees some quarters. He bends down to pick them up. He looks right. He looks left. He sees the sign, free movie, spare change, free beer, riffraff motel. Riffraff only, please. He knows that fits for him. He crawls right in. Next thing you know. Yes, yes, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, oh. Well, doctor, I'm in shock. That was amazing. Um, thank you for coming. All right, Terry, uh, I'm done here. I've got to go. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, some things are just wrong. <laughs> and uh, we couldn't really hear it in the studio, but when you see it later, you'll see how, how wrong the, the riffraff motel can be. But part of the fun, the saga that's building here is this is the, uh, the, the homeless people are, are going to fight back in next week's episode, and they have an answer to what is happening with the Riff Raff Motel. Right. So stay tuned for this continuing drama. Been wonderful having you on the show, Tommaso. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. And, and, and a pleasure having you both on. I, I thank you. Let's bring you back, and let's, let's all work together and get more stuff done. Definitely. And, uh, well, it's incredible what you've done already, so thank you. And uh, right now, we have a band that's called Cruisin'. We have Cinco de Mayo that's called We Need to Celebrate. And Stretch is, uh, is responsible for bringing the band because you're a friend of mine, so thanks for bringing your band. You're very welcome. And uh, you're the drummer tech at Starving Musician. That's correct. And uh, all your drumming needs can be found, uh, well, no, they need to leave you alone and the, you, let know, you have lunch. You know. okay. <laughs> and uh, well, thanks for coming on the show. And, and let's do a uh, let's do a Cinco de Mayo tune and start uh, jumping around and dancing and stuff. Thank you. Right? Right? Thank you. Okay. And we're going to start a little Cinco de Mayo thing for y'all. We'd like to point out that first song we sang, "Sticker Shock," was about ecology. Pero también quisiéramos decir gracias a toda la cultura bilingüe y bicultural porque sabemos que regularmente el 17 de siempre es es el día más importante para el cultura mexicano, pero aquí en los Estados Unidos estamos haciendo más en el 5 de mayo y esto es una cosa muy bien para la cultura de los dos. Gracias, Terry. Can we have one more for me? Two more. Okay. One more.
more. Let's do it. Do you know La Bamba? I know La Bamba. I know La Bamba. La Bamba. Great addition to the show, another guest, Janet Rosenberg. She's with Intero Realty, and she was also in The Good Times and on the cover with Tommaso. And it's wonderful, wonderful to have you here. Thank you. And, and it's, uh, wow, it's, it's such a, when we went over, we, we actually went to a house and did a video shoot with Georg, who's on our show today. And unfortunately, I had some dubbing problems, but I still have some video from it. So we will see you with the introduction with this fine green house. Now, Intero, could you? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm, not go I'm not going to the video yet. Is that, was that the question? There's no video. Oh, there is a video. There's there's a, I mean, I'm sorry, there's a tape. There's a, there's a little DV tape that's sitting up by the, the desk. You can throw that one in. Sorry. This is live. That's why I'm sweating. I wouldn't sweat if it's taped. Um, well, we have some great uh, realtor edge going on here on our show, <laughs> and it's called realtor Janet Rosenberg. I like that. A and an intero realty, and your and your friend guest also realtor. I'm sorry, your name? Chris Boardman. Chris Boardman is yeah, I'm here with us. Broker. Also with Intero. Would you explain a little bit about the realty company? Intero Real Estate Services has certified eco brokers, and that is a special certification and training program for realtors that uh, trains us in energy efficient features in a home and how to make homes uh, less wasteful, how to help our clients become uh, live a, a greener life mm -hmm. and incorporate that into their homes. Great, and we saw some really, really good examples of. Uh, now, is there are there other realtor comp realtor companies that are actually focusing in on this, like Intero is? Not to the extent that Intero is, but I'm aware of. Okay, and, and that was highlighted actually in the article is that this is kind of, you know, this is a kind of breakthrough a little bit having this much. I know. Did you find? There's enough business out there. Are people stymied with when, 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 they, when they come to you? They, there's an agenda. They're looking for green, powered homes and things that are alternative energies. Well, so, I think that you know it is very new. People don't think of green and real estate, right. but when you think about it, realtors are in a perfect position to educate people because we're out there talking to to homeowners and potential homeowners all day right. and we're in and out of their homes 
And with this special training, we can help them make changes in their home that reduce their energy bills okay, cool. and make their homes more valuable. Okay, so is that in the, in the process of the sale or, or do you, uh, would, are you called by people to say, what can we do about our, our energy costs and in general, so then you'll come out and provide that service without a home sale? You know, it's both because, and I'm gonna let Chris speak to this. Okay. We, have, um, we have the whoops, Green Performance Network which is a, a group of community people, business people, um, local vendors that, that use green practices either in construction or um, retail. And we have a whole list of people that offer services so that when clients come to us and say, well, you know, who's doing the windows? Who's doing the low to no VOC paints and carpets? Uh, we have people that do that, um, bamboo flooring, uh, mm -hmm. um, design showroom products, um, and Chris is going to talk more about that. But we, we found that there's such a growing movement right now for this, and it's from very simple things like, um, as he mentioned, changing to CFLs, the, the special light bulbs now. Sure. Um, very simple things in your home that you can do. We actually teach a course on that at Intero to what uh, Georg has done on a much larger scale. Okay, wonderful. Well, let's uh, go down the line then, and, and why don't we hear from uh, Chris? Uh, just like Janet was saying, is we have people uh, calling in. There's a lot of media press, and there is a very big uh, green, mo green movement, and people hear about it, but they don't know how close it is. They don't know how local, and so we've created a network of green professionals that basically covers all aspects of home ownership, home buying, remodeling, um, we start from planning uh, to builders like Georg here. Um, we cover um, remodel products, uh, eco-design resources. They have a whole showroom of recycled materials um, that really look nice. There's, uh, you mentioned the CFLs, just replacing them and they're the coil lights. But they don't fit in the fixtures and they stand out. They don't look like something that you'd find in a million dollar home. But now they're making ones that look just like incandescent bulbs. But they're actually compact fluorescents. Mm -hmm. So nowadays the stuff is, it's just as expensive, it's not any more expensive. Uh, it's just as efficient, if not better or stronger, but it looks beautiful. You know, it's actually better than what we use now. That's, well, that's great. Yeah. We have some of that footage, and we, I want to go to that, and then Georg can, can speak in a little bit about uh, the house, even though we won't have time to go through the whole tape, but mm -hmm. we'll talk with you, and then let's roll that footage right now, if we have that. Here we go. an environmentally Start over? I'm saying very interesting things here. Yeah, audio, please. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> so I'm here I'm with Georg right Klusniak, an environmentally <laughs> conscious builder, and Chris Boardman, who is an eco broker with Intero Real Estate Services. And we have the pleasure of going through Georg's house and understanding how he built this and uh, some of the special things about it. What gave you the inspiration for this house? I've been a contractor for a long time. And for years, I've been trying to convince my clients to dare to build a little bit more environmentally conscious or a little bit more green, more energy efficient. And it was, was always being received as too daring, well, banks might not loan on it, and kind of nobody really wanted to jump over their own shadow. So since I've owned this piece of land with an old house on it and I lived in it for five years, I decided I'll do it myself. And so I designed it. You know, and I went through a lot of phases uh, determining which building um, pieces I should use. I was uh, playing around with straw bale for a long time mm -hmm. and then abandoned that based on the climate and the uh, um, much higher building costs in regards to labor and the engineering would have been quite uh, substantial as well and you would not end up with too much straw bale anyway. So I came across these blocks, they're recycled styrofoam blocks and I can show you one in a while. I have a little piece out on the deck. And they're uh, called Perform Wall Panel System, or also called Rastra, R-A-S-T-R-A. -S -S it's two companies making the same block. And they have a superior R value. They're made out of completely um, post-consume or styrofoam or recycled styrofoam. And it's an admix of cement gets added to it and they get molded and pressed into these 10 feet long beams, you know, at various widths and at 15 inches height. And all you do in essence is stack your walls, put the rebar in and fill them with cement, and then you have a soundproof wall, a fireproof wall, um, 
termite proof wall and it will not as like I said it will not burn and it has um, no outgassing it breezes and you just have a superior building product and the cost was um, affordable enough for me to go ahead and do it after we designed it you know this Janet Dallas was my architect and then Redwood Engineering did the engineering calculations we presented it to the city building department and after initial um, skepticism, you know, we had a meeting and provided them with all the details and the uh, true green aspect of it. And they finally um, gave us the way to go ahead and uh, pursue with the permit, which we got then uh, in a ra rather reasonable time. And then I bulldozed the old house down and started from scratch with this. And I, as I went along, you know, I added more and more green components. You know, I added. Uh, radiant floor heating with some um, special pipes from Sweden, you know, and I added um, on-demand hot water heater, which has a very high efficiency and heats the house, gives me warm water for both bathrooms and the kitchen, so it means it gives me domestic hot water as well. Okay. And, right on. Uh, it's Georg is with us today, and he was talking about our, his house. He was kind enough to let us go through with a camera. Unfortunately, I don't have that comprising as an edited piece. So I need to introduce you and thank you for letting us into your house. You're and, and some of the, so you were talking about the blocks, the elemental elements to building the house and the fireproof blocks that you use. Can you go into that a little bit? Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have the house to look at while you do. So um, maybe you just describe yeah. to us okay. how you got into getting into a, building a greenhouse. Like I mentioned in the introduction of the video that um, I was contemplating for a long time to build an actual energy efficient house with green or alternative building materials. Mm -hmm. And there's only so much out there and I was playing with the thought of straw bale, rammed earth, you know, and then eventually I came across these recycled styrofoam blocks, mm. which are post-consumer styrofoam, which get injected with a cement mix and they make these long beams out of them which are rather light, absolute fireproof, termite proof waterproof and um, they don't burn so um, there's no mold to there's with. no mold either and so <clears throat> you know since none of my clients wanted to dare to build some true greenhouse you know then I figured I just have to go ahead and do it myself and then later on I can show it to the people mm -hmm. because uh, there's a difference like some people mentioned the show earlier about energy efficient houses they don't have to necessarily be green they're just it's good, they're energy efficient. You, know, you can have solar panels on a regular stick-framed house and you know people consider that almost a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go the other way around and build actually the components of the house with true green materials, hopefully non-corporate materials, mm -hmm. hopefully family business materials, mm -hmm. sustainable lumber. And so um, I took a chance and did it. And um, if people want to see more pictures, details of the actual house, Maybe I can have them blend into that website here. Oh, please, yeah. If they want, if, she, if the camera can get it, uh, it would make it so much easier. I don't know who's on, which camera lights on. Okay. So then there's a lot of information on my website and contacts on my website where okay. it'll, ans it'll answer a lot of questions so I don't have to go into detail uh, here. What is your website? It's integralconstruction.net. Integra? Integral. Integral. I-N-T-E-G-R-A-L. I Construction.net. Yeah, it's okay. .net is the key. Um, and then, you know, Janet and Chris helped me actually promote my house, you know, which I wasn't too keen on doing, yeah. you know, like my <laughs> yeah. piece, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm proud to say that I'm really trying to be as green as I can. And, and right now I'm building two more houses in Santa Cruz County one in Scotts Valley, one in Happy Valley, mm -hmm. which are even much more greener than mine. You oh. know, almost one of them will be 100%, which will uh, get a webcam installed soon, you know, and then we people can actually follow the construction on the net. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm glad to see the interest is jumping, you know, about sure. true green building products. And the blocks I use for my house are not only energy efficient, non-corporate, recycled and green, they're actually highly affordable too. Yeah. So any, a lot of people who weren't able to build before, maybe now they can. Okay. And now a couple of the things that jumped out with me was how much you pay for your utilities mm -hmm. <laughs> on this big house that you have. Okay. Can you give us a couple quick examples? Yeah, it's 
Yeah, and it's not a joke. It, and actually, I broke it down during the cold months of January when oh. we had this really cold spell, and I separated the electric from the uh, mm -hmm. heating cost. And I have this super high efficient on demand hot water heater from Italy, and the product name is called Baxi, B A X I. And I figured out that the heating cost for my house, which has radiant flow heating all, all around, is about 2,000 square feet, has two bathrooms and a kitchen, and it ended up being in, uh, around $45 a month. 45, not 100. No, $45 dollars a, month a month for heating, yeah. <laughs> okay, so everybody flock to integral <laughs> construction. <laughs> I mean, really, it's, it's the yeah. future, and it's why are we not doing this? Yeah. Yeah, that's my question. That's and I a, think people yeah. should really contact Greenspace, contact Janet, contact yes. Chris, Intero, contact yeah. me, Tom, and, Tom and, and between Intero, real estate, and Integro construction, I think we can maybe start a little movement here in town, which Let's do. may spread, Let's you know, do. beyond. It's the, a beautiful house yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. you walk through, okay. I mean, it's I'll top of the line. Week. Yeah. My show. <laughs> you have a few stats that you are uh, interesting information that uh, pieces you wanted to share with us. I do, and you know what Georg has done on his scale is phenomenal. And but what we can do every day, simple things: choose glass containers over plastic containers. Glass can be recycled into more glass, and it's a perpetual product. Choose reusable cloth bags over the paper and plastic. Uh, reusable or cheap, convenient, and washable. Choose baking soda over aerosol uh, air fresheners. Use cast iron pans instead of Teflon. Mm. Uh, the PFOAs in Teflon have been shown to cause developmental problems in lab animals. Mm. Do we really want to be cooking with that? And cast iron gives you more iron in your food. Uh, <laughs> uh, here's a good one. If every household in the United States swapped out one roll of conventional toilet paper for recycled paper, toilet paper, it would say 400,000 trees. Oh, wow. Everyone changing one roll of toilet paper. Yeah. Uh, use all natural soaps instead of antibacterial soaps and uh, cloth shower curtains over plastic ones. Mm -hmm. the, P the PVCs and plastic shower curtains never goes away. Oh, okay. And think Good. about this. Every second in the United States, we use 3,000 gallons of petroleum products in our cars. Every wow. second. Wow. If I can add something, this is not just an environmental issue, this is also an, a social issue because all of the things that she mentioned, the, re, the negative repercussions from these are felt by the uh, poorest people in our nation and in the world. Mm -hmm. So if you are doing these things, you're not looking out for the environment, but you're looking out for your fellow human beings. Well, that's uh, wonderful information from all of you today and let's have you all back, please. Mm -hmm. And let's get this movement going. Oh, Santa Cruz is already a movement. <laughs> but, yeah, it's a uh, great place to start. To, uh, make sense and throw it out and right. do the best we can and spread this green thing. Uh, thank you for letting us do it. Yes. 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 Thank, thank you, so thank you much. Terry. Absolutely. Thank you for all being on the show today. We, we have other guests, but first we want to get back to the band, Cruising, and it's Cinco de Mayo. It's Terry Lee Martin's show and the Not Too Early, Not Too Late show. Let's go on with some music right now. And also, by the way, that house, Terry, that house was beautiful. Thanks. It was green and it was wow. also beautiful. Billy's Blue. Been having these blues of mine. For a real long time Fruit left untaken You know it withers on a vine Sunny singing the moon Sweet mama, how you shine Ain't nobody's blues like mine Sweet Eliza told the preacher man I got a thing for you She was only sweet 16 Preacher man was 32 River sing to the sea I'll get to you in time Ain't nobody's blues like mine I Ain't never seen a night so long Daylight didn't dawn You're just living in the dark Till you can really love someone Mountains sing to the sky That's as high as I can climb Ain't 
nobody's blues like mine I looked inside my heart I tried to make a star Change the world with my little song How come we sit and cry After we say goodbye How can a true love go so wrong Just have you do one song now, and then we'll have you do a, a couple more at the end of the show. And you sound so good. Thank you. Thank you. Are you having fun? Yeah. Cruising. That was the song. Yeah. Billy wrote. <laughs> wrote that last one also, by the way. He wrote this for the song Cruising for the band Cruising. Oh well, you know it's a it's a it's a great to have you here. And I know that you offered to do the sh the show nude, but you know I we backed That's off right. on that. I'm it's a little. Take off our clothes right now. <laughs> We need it the ratings. Crazy, but it's real. We need the ratings. Go for it. <laughs> um, we have we have our own greening that we're incorporating into the studio. Do we have a shot of, of, of what we're doing for our own show? And we have uh, Ryan, who is the executive director, pedaling in there. Hey, how's it going, Ryan? Okay. Yeah, you know, keep pedaling because we got it. That's how we're powering up this show, and he's he's really working hard. Working hard for us, Ryan is. He's a big part of the show now. He's actually more important than me. I'm, <laughs> I'm not important at all. The guy pedaling is important. <laughs> and, and we're all pedaling, actually, unless we have a billion dollars. Yeah. Let's, let's keep pedaling towards that destiny. Well, hello. Hello. I think Susan's with us in the building here, right? <laughs> yes. OK. And you are, and it's wonderful. I've talked with you on this phone so much, I haven't actually met you. That's why yes. I love this show. You can actually meet people that I here on the phone. Of course, I've seen you on television. Really? Yes. I haven't. I, I don't have a TV. I, <laughs> I just freak out. So, uh, no, you are also Pisces Moon. Yes. And you are the, are you the main inspirator behind the Broadway Playhouse? 
We, Pisces Moon actually is the steward of the Broadway Playhouse. Oh. So Pisces Moon makes its home there. Okay. And we have um, theater classes and we do plays there. Okay. And then we also rent it out to other groups okay. for classes, events, performances. But Susan Silton, who you are, mm -hmm. is the main force behind, I get that impression that you're the, one of the main drives behind the Playhouse. Well, are you, or we've been there a while. Okay. And um, it started out that the Playhouse had a little theater mm -hmm. and it had the Last Supper in it. Oh. Yeah, and then they took the Last Supper, moved it somewhere else, and now they had a theater space. So we started to use it. I used it with different community theater groups till about eight years ago or so. And then three groups got together and we managed it and we called ourselves in true Santa Cruz fashion, the Broadway Playhouse Alliance. And oh. then the other two groups, um, they disbanded and we were left and now we're managing it for the um, Santa Cruz Art League who Whoa. has a gallery there. Okay, I'm a little dizzy. But I, I think I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is the Last Supper? What was it, Doug? Did you, did, did you know hear about no, that? Uh, oh, okay. What, what was it? It was um, a um, th uh, three-dimensional representation of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper painting. Oh, okay. And it was oh. right there on a stage, okay. and people would come and just sit and look at it. Well, it's beautiful. But also, yeah. right now, there's moving art. Yes. which is the play that's going on now. Exactly, thank you, would what you, a good segue. Would you like to talk about that? Yes, um, Pisces Moon <laughs> Productions is doing The Exonerated, okay. which is a, I call theatrical journalism. It is the true stories in their own words of six Americans who were um, condemned to death, mm -hmm. lived on death row, and then exonerated okay. because of something that was found later. Okay. Yeah. And so we're doing this play. We started it last Friday. We're doing it until May 26th. What was something that was found later? DNA. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's thousands of people being released because of, well, they didn't do it. Yeah. And uh, so that's one good reason why the death penalty really doesn't work and shouldn't work. Exactly. Uh, but this play is riveting. And what I saw from the tape that we can't play because it wasn't appropriate, somehow it didn't work, yeah. as, uh, I, I got to get you guys in here to do a real real performance. I would somehow. love that. So, we're okay. we're do, in fact the next play we're doing is with Cabrillo College. They're going oh. to sponsor us and we're doing Dead Man Walking. Okay. Yeah, which is b based on Sister Prejean's book Dead Man Walking which was made into a film. It was directed by Tim Robbins. Okay. Well, what a great movie that was. And I know yes. it was a book, I think. I'm pretty yes, sure. Yes, it it was. And uh, also um, <clears throat> pretty are you going to have anything happy at the Playhouse soon? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, um, Pisces Moon is going to be working with Jeff Dinell, who has a oh, program okay. here on community yeah, television. Sundays. Um, so what? So what? And we're going to be um, working with him on a comedy that's actually going to be done Good. at The Attic, okay. which is in downtown Santa Cruz. Well, I'm trying to get Jeff to do some reporting on my show for oh. some of these zany bits. And oh, you should. really funny. He's very funny. He's in the play. <laughs> I know. So yeah. go, go see The Exonerated. Yes. Oh, no, I'm not supposed to say that. So you got to walk by and hang out and then go in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> go check out what a, what a wonderful time. Let's get you on in the future and maybe get, get some real drama from yes, you in here. Yes, that'd okay. be wonderful. Susan Silton. There's a middle name in there. Meyer. Susan Meyer Silton. Meyer Silton. Thank you yes. for being on the show today. Thank you. And, uh, well, and Doug, also, I, you know, it's been a wonderful time having you here as co-host. You're not going anywhere. We're going to stay here yeah. and hang out. But, uh, but we're going to play more music, and, and we are going to go away. And in between, we're going to check out some other green things we're doing in the studio, maybe if with the remote <laughs> cam right now. Thank you for joining me, Terry Lee Martin. This is the Terry Lee Martin Not Too Early, Not Too Late show. We have a band called Cruisin'. They're going to play some more happy fun. Cinco de Mayo, maybe, I don't know, just play something. Thank you for being here. Okay, Cruisin', right on. Don't need 
to grind my gear. These wheels could roll another hundred k. Well, I could be cruising for a lot of years. Just go around me if I'm in your way. Well, I'm cruising, I'm cruising, cruising the way I'm choosing. I'm moving and moving mile by mile. I'm cruising, I'm choosing the pace to chase the blues, and I'm getting there in style. Get there in style. I'm losing, 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 I'm los